Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. So I'm going to continue on my anatomy of an artwork series. So in this video, I'm going to be guiding you through how I draw lips. So this is a really fun one. I really enjoy drawing mouths and lips, and I think they are often done wrong, and it's quite easy to do them right. So. I, I hope that this can help you out in just drawing better mouths and, uh, and lips. Also a huge thank you to Squarespace once again for helping me out and sponsoring this video. I'll tell you more about them a bit later. The tools I'm going to be using today is a 2B mechanical pencil, some paper of course, an 8B pencil, cotton wool, kneadable eraser, Tombow Mono Zero eraser, and what else? Oh, this itty bitty little makeup sponge as well. Um, I also use a mechanical eraser. These are really great for getting white values in an area that you've already kind of applied a fair amount of graphite on. Um, I also use a blending stump. Cool, let's jump into it. I'm going to start just by drawing a circle on the page. This is just going to make it nice and neat. I like drawing things in circles. They look pretty. First thing I do is I like to find the two indents on either side of the mouth. This will give me an idea of how wide the mouth is and to establish the line between where the two lips meet. The cupid's bow is the center of the mouth over here and is slightly above the two ends of the mouth. If you're drawing a mouth from front on, the cupid's bow will be in the center, kind of like my previous mouth tutorial. But in this case, the mouth is on the side or 45 degrees. So the cupid's bow is gonna be far left for the top lip, there are five fleshy deposits. So there's a smaller fleshy deposit in the center, there's two larger ones on either side, and then there's two smaller ones on either side of those. Drawing a mouth straight on, these are usually pretty evenly spaced, but because we're drawing a mouth from the side here, the one fleshy deposit on the side will be the largest one, and as we move away, they'll be slightly smaller, and the furthest away one actually won't be visible in this case. But this is how I draw them over here. And for the bottom lip, we're going to have two overlapping ovals. Once again, the one that's facing us closest will be much larger and the other one kind of falls a little bit with some foreshortening in the background. Marking out these deposit circles can help get an idea of the outline of the lip. It can also give an idea of the volume of the lip, so I found them really helpful. The fulcrum is the middle groove of the upper lip that runs from the top lip to the bottom of the nose. So you can draw this in to get an idea of how the nose meets the mouth. And now we can just start shading the top lip. The top lip is almost entirely in shadow, so we can just mostly shade that across, obviously depending on where your light source is. In this case, the light is coming from the top and from the side. And we're just going to be blocking out all the shadow areas. With this stage, remember to be as accurate as possible, but we're also working very loosely. So we're being accurate, but we're covering large areas and not being precious about detail. And here we're filling in the shadow that the top lip is casting onto the bottom lip. So we can call this a cast shadow. That is just below where the lips meet. Then you can mark out where your highlights will be on the bottom lip. Try not to go over this with pencil. Um, this is an area that we want to keep as clean as possible so we can have these crisp highlights which is really going to make your drawing pop and keep the contrast as rich as possible. I moved over to an 8B here just to get some darker values for the darkest shadows where the lips meet. To include some, some contour lines, I find it really useful to try and get an idea of the volume of the lips, and this also plays a part in the perspective. So as we move around, some of the contour lines will be bowed to the left, others will be bowed to the right, and the center point that we're looking directly on will pretty much have a straight contour line going straight down. These lines are also really useful for the creases of the lips, so I use these as a bit of a guide for, for those creases to try and keep everything looking symmetrical and to have a, a good volume. Okay, so now we've pretty much got most of the shape and get it ready so that we can dive into some of the details. So this is the really fun part. I really enjoy getting lost in the details. I think in this stage, spend some time studying your reference. It's gonna be really hard to draw it exactly the way that your reference is. So you wanna try and almost decode how the wrinkles are going, figure out where the light is coming from, where the highlight is, where the shadow is, and start working out your strategy of how you're going to draw this. So 
In some cases, you might want to do the highlights first and then draw the shadows according to those highlights. Other times, you might want to do the shadows first and have some soft lines and then have a highlight on top of that. So in this case, I'm going to be doing the shadows first. So a little trick that I've always noticed is these wrinkles often look like upside down Ys and lots of little diamonds. So I'm going to use those to try and find a, a random kind of pattern that would mimic the creases of the lip. Try and avoid creating obvious patterns, so parallel lines or anything that is very, um, I don't know how to put this, but anything that is very man-made. You want to try and have things as random and organic as possible. Rendering the details is super fun. We're trying to isolate these areas, find out where the larger volumes are, and then slowly give them some textures. So, so little lumps and crevices on the lips, and then give those some little highlights and lowlights and, uh, and, and some texture. It's really important to study the reference, as I said, figure out where the light is coming from, whether you're doing something that is a crevice or a bump. So if it's a bump, the highlight is going to come from the same side as, where, as your light source. If it's a crevice, the highlight will be on the other side. So things like wrinkles and that, the highlight of those is always on the opposite side from your light source. The best way to have good looking realistic lips is to keep your highlight as crisp as possible. So try and keep this area clean and have a harsh line between your midtones and your highlight on the bottom lip. One of the keys to drawing a mouth that looks very realistic is the wetness of the lips. So in order to do this successfully, you need to manipulate the relationship between your midtones and your highlights. Try and really emphasize this, try and get a stark contrast between the two and have sharp lines dividing those two values. Okay, and once we've really sunk ourselves into the details, we've, we're using the contour lines a little bit to keep that sense of volume in the lips while we're adding some texture and some, some detail. At this point, I'm just starting to get a little bit lost in it. I'm just really having fun with the little wrinkles on the top lip. and um, I'm going to start drawing some little hairs around the mouth and some pores and this is just excessive obviously there's no real need to do this this is just about having fun and uh, and enjoying the process so there we go I hope you guys found this drawing really easy to follow along with and hopefully it helps you with your drawings of mouths uh, before I end this video I just want to give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor Squarespace I've been working with them for a couple of years now and they played a crucial role in my career, not only in sponsoring these videos and helping me maintain this YouTube channel, but more importantly, when I was just starting out, I didn't know how to create a good looking website. And the idea of trying to design something and have it work on all platforms and translate to mobile was just too daunting. But Squarespace provided a really good solution to that and that pretty much solved my problem. I found it really easy to show my work and make it easy for collectors to find me and get in touch with me. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them, set up an online store, and most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use the soft code and get 10% off your first purchase. Cool. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. Drawing mouths is a lot of fun for me, and uh, I hope you can find the drawing that as well. Let me know if there's anything you think I might have missed out, um, or if this video has helped you. I, I really enjoy hearing the feedback um, and also just learning from the, the comments as well. Leave a like, it helps the channel out in a huge way. As always, thanks for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.